guys, this is Eric Metamar with UltimateInvestorSystem.com. I'm here today to share a real quick real estate tip with you. A uh, real estate tip that, um, you know, a lot of times when, when people are talking about real estate negotiation or negotiation in general, generally they're talking about, or, or you might imagine uh, yourself sitting across the table with either a buyer or a seller or perhaps an investor, and you're trying to negotiate out a deal and you're hammering it out and there's this face-to-face, -face, you think, conflict. Uh, but but mainly what I'm pointing at is you, is generally when you think of negotiation, you think of negotiation as something that's going to happen at a table or once the offer's written. Um, but I want to I want to prove to you something a little bit different uh, and change the direction that you're thinking about when you're thinking about real estate negotiation. I want you to start your re real estate negotiation far before you get to the closing table, far before the showing ever happens. And that has been proven time and time again with me to be one of the most effective real estate negotiation tactics there is. And that's starting it ahead of time. Now what I mean is, imagine yourself going out to see a home. Say We're going we're gonna to put yourself in the shoes of a, of a seller. So uh, Jim calls you, says he wants to come and take a look at your house. And uh, sure enough, Jim comes out to your house, he looks at your house, he really likes your house. He decides he wants to put an offer on your house. Now, say you're, he's written the offer and um, he said, this is the best I can do. And at that point, it wasn't good enough for you. So uh, perhaps you think about using one of the old real estate negotiation tactics of bringing up, well, you know, I've had other people come in and looking. Um, in which case, you can imagine you'd sound like a complete fool because... Of course, you hadn't had anybody come out and look, um, and it, it would make sense to use a tactic like that if you planned ahead of time, and, and that's one of the things that it all involves getting in there ahead of time. Um, but in, in a case like that, one of the things that you, you may want to say to him, or if you, were, if you were stupid, I should say, not stupid, but I guess misinformed would be a better word. If you're a misinformed person, you might say to him, well, you know, your price isn't good enough, can you do any better? Then maybe you'd wiggle wobble around a little bit, and eventually he'd either end up buying uh, at his price or walking away. But what I'd like you to think about is before he gets there, you have a quick conversation with him. So Jim calls up, says, you know, I, I'm really wondering, I'd like to come and see your house. And you say, you know, Jim, what, what time would you like to come in and see it? He says, four o'clock. You say, oh, that's great. Because we got to we already had a couple of buyers coming in the day before, so four o'clock Friday will work a lot better because Thursday we kind of got way too many people coming. That pre-plants the idea in Jim's head that there is interest in your house. If you were to come out and say, Jim, there's a lot of people interested in our house, Jim would think you were full of crap. But since you just pre-planted in the story and you're not actually saying anything, it slides right under his radar because our minds are, are designed to pick up on BS. We all have pretty decent sized BS detectors. But by saying, oh yeah, well, we got a few people coming in ahead of time, uh, the day before, you actually work out perfect. It doesn't it doesn't set off any BS alarms. So then the day that the day that Jim comes in to look, as you're going through the house, um, you could point out something. So that maybe there's a, a light dirt stain on the floor. He said, "Oh yeah, you know, it really take me off." The people who were through here yesterday, they really uh, like, he left that dirt stain over there on the floor. And that really ticked me off. But you know. Uh, he'll, he's probably kicking himself because I have a feeling he's going to want to buy this place anyway. And you're saying all this prior to Jim even expressing any interest in your house. Because until he's expressed interest in his house, his BS detector isn't up. Now, if he had said he liked your house and all of a sudden you start saying, Whoa, yeah, you know the guy here yesterday really liked it. Then Jim's going to think you're, you're full of it. But by planning all of these ideas in ahead of time, you've already played into Jim that there were showings the day before. Uh, you've already proven to Jim that someone was there and now if Jim likes the house you are already gonna have a significant amount of leverage uh, scarcity leverage as I like to call it over him because you've already told him that there was someone there and you've already told him someone liked the house and he believes you because you told him in a story form before he even mentioned the fact that he didn't want the house or did want the house you see what I mean there if, if you were to try to say all of these things once you know that he likes the house, anything that you say is going to be BS to him. But if you're saying all this stuff before you even know if he likes the house, 
he's far more apt to believe everything you say because it slides in under the radar. Because he, he doesn't know, he knows in his own mind and even subconsciously that he hasn't said that he liked the house yet, so why would you tell him all of this information ahead of time? Does that make sense to you? If you picture yourself in this situation, if, if you were um, coming to look at my house and uh, said, you know, Eric, I'd like to come in tomorrow and take a look at the house, and I just invite you over to look at it, you're going through the house, and I'm just showing you the house like usual, pointing out a few things, good, the bad, and you're like, oh, I'm ready to write an, ready to write an offer. And I was like, oh, well, you know, there's a couple other people thinking about writing offers. At that instant, if you think about it and imagine it in your own mind a minute, you're going to see that you would think it was complete BS because you know that I'm only saying this, or in your mind, you, you don't know for a fact, but you, you're believing in your mind that, well, why wouldn't I said something before? This seems a little fishy. All of a sudden, now you're telling me about people wrote offers. But now, flip the situation around and imagine that you called me uh, the day before a showing and said you wanted to come in and take a look, and I said, oh, you know, that's awesome. If you guys want to come in, what time were you thinking? And you say 5 o'clock, and it's 5 o'clock Monday you want to come in. I say, that works out great because we had a flood a couple we have, we've already got a couple of people lined up at that same time coming in on Sunday and, and I don't like to show it to multiple couples at a time so that works out perfect. You want to make it very very nonchalant so you're that's a that's another great way to say it. Say you know uh, that's good that you want to come at that day at that time because the previous day oh, we've already got someone coming in and then when you're looking around the house maybe my spouse is there and I imagine I said over to my wife I said, do you remember the names of the people who were through yesterday and I said oh yeah then I'll say something to my wife like, weren't they strange? And and then my wife and I are talking about things and uh, got your mind going a little. And in, in your mind, you're not even supposed to be listening because I'm talking to my wife. But I say, yeah, you know, it'll be interesting to see if they write an offer. And then I just turn to you and start talking to you. Well, immediately all that stuff's going in. Okay, there's scarcity on the house. Someone else is looking at the house. Someone else wants the house. You've come to the conclusion yourself from listening to my wife and I talk rather than me trying to cram something down your throat. So what it does is it, it, it builds everything in, and the cool part is, is if they don't like your house, you're not on anything. But if they did happen to like it, your chances are going to be significantly higher of selling them a home because they already believe in, in the scarcity. You've got scarcity leverage on them. You've proven to them before they even mentioned that they like your house that there was interest in it you've proven to them before they mentioned they like your house that people were through the house and all of these things say to them on a level well if someone else likes it then it must be a good house if someone else is thinking of writing an offer then it must be a good house and you're going to significantly increase your chances of selling uh, that about concludes this short lesson if you'd like to learn more lessons feel free to visit my website www.ultimateinvestorsystem.com and have a great day